Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is blowing up movie theaters like Rocket and one of his moon-destroying weapons, and there are plenty of very good reasons for its deserved success. One of the biggest factors that weighed on the release of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania was the fact that it hit a wall of negative critical reviews before it even reached its opening night. In contrast, Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 was buzzing the moment the early screening started. To be clear, some reviews were a mixed bag, but that didn't matter. The overwhelming message from early viewers was simple – Vol. 3 is one of the MCU's crown jewels. The warm early reception paved the way for viewers to flock to the cinemas to see if the critics were right. With so much buzz over the long-awaited third installment, the strong initial response confirmed that everyone needed to get to a theater to see the space spectacle for themselves. There's one significant external factor that guaranteed that the third Guardians film would succeed at the box office. There was very little competition. James Gunn's third and final MCU installment arrived in cinemas with evergreen movies populating screens and no major tentpole film on the horizon. Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 came out on May 5th. The Super Mario Bros. movie came out on April 5th. Despite release dates one month apart, Super Mario was still the runner-up at the box office on Quill and Company's opening weekend. Look at us! We're adorable! The pair was distantly followed by other, less popular options like Evil Dead Rise, Are You There God, It's Me Margaret, and newcomer Love Again. Other cinematic runs were also still playing, including John Wick Chapter 4 and Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves, which goes to show how slim the options were on the first weekend of May 2023. And the second-place competition from the still-overperforming Mario only brought in $18.6 million, less than a sixth of the galactic-sized total domestic haul of Guardians. Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 came out in early May, right in the middle of spring, but the trailers billed the film as an early summer blockbuster. The truth is, summer blockbusters don't care about hard calendar dates. Warm weather is here, summer break is right around the corner, vacations are on the calendar, the summer movie season has arrived, and the third Guardians installment capitalized on that fact. The argument goes back and forth about whether the summer box office is all it's cracked up to be, and the 2023 summer slate is certainly a mixed bag. There are plenty of tentpole films and indie alternatives coming to theaters in the coming months, but the post-pandemic theatrical slump continues to dog cinemas, making any summer success questionable. Still, Guardians 3 managed to pull some of that summer box office magic into spring. The result was a film billed as kicking off the supposedly impending summer swell, which certainly didn't hurt the movie's must-see appeal. The theatrical experience isn't what it used to be. Before the pandemic, going to the movies was a common activity regardless of what movie titles were up on the marquee. But the entire pastime came to a screeching halt in 2020 due to the pandemic. Since quarantines and social distancing requirements have lifted, theaters have had a slow and painful return to normalcy. Even then, the new normal for theaters is hardly reminiscent of the old one. Packed auditoriums are rare and only tend to happen when there is a truly big movie that will attract an audience. Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 fits the bill of a genuine tentpole film in a way that few others can. It's a large-scale story with A-list talent and glittering special effects that concludes the story of a top property in an already wildly successful cinematic universe. By post-pandemic theatrical standards, Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 was simply too big to fail. Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 is worth watching for the emotional story it tells, but plenty of external factors had viewers ready to watch it as soon as possible. One of the most prominent of these was watching James Gunn's MCU swan song. As the veteran director prepares to reboot Superman as part of his DC-focused future, fans were ready to flock to see his final directorial moments in Marvel's universe. The emotions were even higher for fans who remembered Gunn's sudden dismissal from the franchise back in 2018 and his even more abrupt rehiring two years later. Since Gunn's reinstatement, fans have anxiously waited to see what he would cook up for his last hurrah in the MCU, and he didn't disappoint. Back in 2014, the unexpectedly emotional story of the first Guardians of the Galaxy captured the hearts of die-hard and fair-weather fans alike. The success of the first film was so great that it competed with obvious blockbusters, like The Avengers, in the hearts and minds of MCU audiences. Its sequel, while less popular, still built on the existing narrative, simultaneously creating more laughs and greater emotional stakes. We were always searching for a family until we found each other. During the extended lull between the second and third franchise films, the bumbling but heroic group got tangled up in the Infinity War affair with the Avengers, where they lost Gamora and saw half of their crew snapped into thin air. 
They went through even more harrowing adventures in Avengers Endgame before making a brief pit stop in Thor's fourth franchise film. Then they set the stage for Volume 3 with the Disney Plus Christmas special released in late 2022. From their spunky origins to a Christmas light-infused romp on Nowhere with Kevin Bacon, this ragtag team of heroes has seen it all. The fact that their third standalone film was heavily billed as the original group's last outing and the final chapter of their story made it an automatic trip to the theater on opening weekend for countless fans. The MCU is in the midst of a seismic shift. The first three phases of the cinematic universe, collectively billed as the Infinity Saga, officially ended in the wake of the conflict with Thanos. Since then, Phase 4 struggled to recapture the magic of the first wave of Marvel movies. New heroes were introduced in isolated stories that only occasionally overlapped with the larger narrative. In addition, the use of Disney Plus limited series alongside full-length feature films disrupted and accelerated the traditionally slow buildup of past MCU storytelling. Phase 5 has begun, with Kang looming and many crossovers in store, yet the transition from the classic Avengers to a new roster of heroes remains shaky. That's why a group like the Guardians of the Galaxy is so priceless. The team links to the past and projects into the future. A movie like this one evokes nostalgia while also setting up the storylines and stakes of future films. This isn't just helpful behind the scenes, fans feel it too. The ability to live in the comfort zone of past franchise experiences while getting amped for future possibilities gave Volume 3 a dual attraction that is hard to find in the MCU at the moment. One morbidly fascinating factor that doubtless drew many viewers to see Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 on opening weekend was the question of who was going to die. While there are multiple death scares, particularly for Star-Lord and Rocket, by the time the credits roll, no one from the original gang is given their final last words. Yet the question of which of the original gang would die was in the air for months leading up to the film's release. The trailers showed clips of Nebula carrying a limp Star-Lord, Rocket is shown surrounded by white light, there's a snapshot of Quill screaming in grief. The signs were there, and while they ended up being red herrings, they motivated a lot of viewers to get off the couch and hightail it to the nearest big screen before they saw spoilers online. Rocket is one of the original Guardians of the Galaxy. He's been with the team from the beginning when the crew bumped into one another on Xandar. He bonded with his new family and suffered through losing them in the blip. Yet despite his presence, cynical humor, and endless devotion to his friends, we didn't really know who the MCU's version of Rocket was. Or if you want to blow up moons. No one's blowing up moons. You just want to suck the joy out of everything. The promotional material made it clear that the third Guardians movie wasn't just a send-off for the original team, but also an homage to Rocket. The raccoon was an underdeveloped character that was near and dear to the director's heart. In a 2022 interview with Entertainment Weekly, Gunn explained his motivation for shining a spotlight on the Guardian's smartest member. He said, One of the reasons why I came back to make this movie was because I felt like I needed to tell Rocket's story. I would have been very sad not to complete the trilogy for many reasons, but I just feel very connected to Rocket. I feel like nobody would be able to tell his full story if it wasn't me. Gunn may have a special affinity for Rocket, but there are millions of fans close behind him. Learning the origins of everyone's favorite trash panda was too good to miss. Groot has had one of the most transformative journeys of any MCU character. While the stoic nature of Groot's race has remained intact throughout the arc of his character's evolution, the rest of him has changed every time we've seen him. I am the original Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy went down in a self-sacrificing ball of arboreal glory as the team saved Xandar from an Infinity Stone wielding Ronan the Accuser. By the end of the film, an offshoot of the hero was growing in a planter. In Volume 2, Baby Groot is dancing around with toddler-like innocence. Infinity War features a teenage Groot obsessed with himself and uninterested in helping unless he has to. By the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, Groot is looking all grown up. One of the small yet significant draws of a third Guardians of the Galaxy flick was the fact that we could see where Groot is in his ever-growing state. It turns out that we get two iterations for the price of one. Initially, Groot is in his young adult phase, and he remains that way for the bulk of the movie. However, in one of the end credit scenes, we're treated to a supersized version of the character. Whether he's a happy-go-lucky sapling or a living tree, gouging where the character is during his life cycle has become a fun revelation with each Guardian's appearances. Looking back, Thanos was a pretty incredible MCU antagonist. Building up a multi-movie villain and delivering a satisfying payoff is hard. 
One-off villains often outshine them, especially with good writing and execution. Past big bads like Michael B. Jordan's Killmonger and Kate Blanchett's Hela exemplify this, and so does Chuck Woody Awuji's High Evolutionary and Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3. The High Evolutionary is a detached and lofty villain who fascinates and horrifies all at once. While less sympathetic than other antagonists, the character is frightening in a cold and rational way that makes him the stuff of nightmares. I'm not trying to conquer the universe. I'm perfecting it." Iwuji brings the High Evolutionary to life in an incredibly believable way, with a performance that ranks amongst the best that the MCU has given us in years. The High Evolutionary may go down with his planet-sized ship, but he made a big impact in what just might be his only MCU appearance. Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 may seem like a blast from the past, but it technically belongs to Phase 5 of the MCU. It fits squarely in the middle of the current mega-narrative arc, the Multiverse Saga. True, the third film in the series doesn't have much to do with traversing multiple dimensions, but it prepares the ground for the increasingly complex storytelling ahead. Gamora's story illustrates this. In Volume 3, the daughter of Thanos is not herself. In fact, she's a past iteration of Gamora from 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy storyline, transplanted several years into the future. The original Gamora died in Avengers Infinity War at the hands of her adopted father. Everyone else who died in the past stayed dead, not her. Why? Was it the magic cliff? I don't know. The interactions between this reset Gamora and the rest of the Guardians are a nice testing ground to explore how to tell meaningful multiverse narratives that actually matter. Of course, the fact that the Gamora storyline was already teased in Avengers Endgame made it something fans were invested in watching play out as soon as possible.